Good morning, afternoon, day, or night. TED Talks are a series of speeches discussing various ways to improve oneself or humanity as a whole. Swag! And then there is the ugly step-sibling of Ted who definitely gets left out of the family photos called Ted X. Literally anyone can give a Ted X talk. I haven't always been a banana. For every Ted X talk that lives up to the expectations of having a life-changing message, there's another one that literally no one needed to hear. We all have heroes. Everyone has somebody who showed you the way. Uh... He'll probably tell a rousing story about how his dad is his hero. Or maybe his hero is Jesus. For me, it has always been one man. One lone voice out there in the wilderness guiding me through good times and through bad. It has always been this man. Don't get me wrong, Bono has done a lot of great things, but he's your hero? Guiding you through good times and bad is Bono. I think you have to understand how I feel about this one U2 song, the song Elevation. I'm sure some of you know it. And there's a certain magic that happens when Elevation is played live, a connection between the band and the fans. So now he's just advertising attending U2 concerts. I wonder if he still loves U2 this much after they put that album on all of our phones. I'm not going to let you guys leave here today without hearing this song live. We have a very special guest here today. Put your hands together, please, for my guitar. Ladies and gentlemen, my guitar, please, thank you. There's not much scarier in this world than when a white dude has a guitar in a setting that he should not. But what he is about to do is much, much worse than playing Wonderwall on the quad of his college. Please keep the applause going for the guitar, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. How dare you not be giving my guitar thunderous applause. Oh, uh, keep it going. Oh, uh, this is a rock and roll show, y'all, huh? Dude. All right, center section, come on in, come on, join them. Right he really here. envisioned this whole audience participation bit as the audience going crazy for him. But most of these people really just want to leave the room right now. I'm just watching the video, and the tension between me and the X to close out the tab is palpable. Yes! Keep it going, TEDx video! The only way that that sentence could have been less rock and roll is if he was shouting, Yeah! Keep it going, Lifespring Christian Church! That was outstanding. We didn't even have to bring out the extra special Bono sunglasses for this. Fantastic. You mean to tell me that there is a timeline where you do all of that with Bono sunglasses on? And I'm not lucky enough to be living in that alternate timeline? <laughs> Feelings. Of course, his TED Talk does eventually have a point tying back to you two, but much like what we say to our dogs, ooh, big stretch. When you have that passionate community, the rules do not exist. You can do anything you want. Marketing is easier with a strong community, much like how U2's concerts have a strong community and the audience sings along with Bono. But let's be real, the only reason that Dan gave this TED Talk was so that he could live out his dreams of being a rock star. Not all TED Talks involve someone playing the guitar, Dan is a special case. This next one clearly just tried to fit in all of the inspirational speech buzzwords that she could think of, and then one buzzword that I think none of us could have ever expected. Swag. It took me hearing her say that one word to know that this TED Talk was gonna be a ride. It's my style. It's just me. White woman wearing a Where's Waldo sweater says her style is swag. Swag is what makes you uniquely who you are. Redefining personality as swag, a TEDx talk. Swag is even my good friend Amy, who's 25 and wears granny sweaters. Need I point out the Where's Waldo sweater again? I think you're in no place to be judging your friends on their style. It's what is above the norm of society. So swag is both who you are at your core, but also something that transcends society as a whole? Swag is success with a game changer. Oh, swag is an acronym for whatever that means. I wanted to leave you with four tips of how you can be a game changer. So we're the game changers? Then why is the acronym success with a game changer? Shouldn't it be success as a game changer or SAG? But don't worry, she said it's four tips and swag is a four letter word. She can still tie those things nicely together. The first thing is, know your strengths. It doesn't seem like she's gonna tie the four tips into swag, but I still think it's a good idea, so I'm going to. So, uh, strengths, know them. To simply do what you love. Whatever you love, do it. 
The third thing is to have a good group of people around you. A strong inner circle. Real people who are so invested in your success that it becomes theirs as well. And they can sit down and tell you, Tori, that wasn't so good, but this is how we change it. Tori, that TED Talk wasn't so good, and this is how we change it. Don't do it. Never stop improving. That's synonymous with growing. That's also our G to finish out the word swag that seems to no longer play a part in this TED Talk. Elevating yourself, getting elevated. I guess getting elevated is also a G, but talk about doing a lot to say a little. And if you think this TED Talk wasn't already confusing enough, then strap in for the spoken word portion of this TED Talk. And getting elevated, it might seem like too much to grasp. And I'm afraid if that's what you feel, you'll always finish last. But I think that a TEDx talk that starts with a woman defining swag and ends with her using spoken word kind of contradicts itself. The final TED talk that we didn't need is by far the most egregious. I do need to credit Scott Kramer because his video is the reason that I found out that this TED talk exists. So I'm 31 years old. I have my PhD in history. I would consider myself very successful in my career choice. I absolutely love my job. Are you sure that you love your job? And I'm pretty much happy about everything. I love that she leads it off with, I'm happy, because she spends the entire TED talk talking about why she's unhappy. I'm not engaged. I'm not even close. So according to traditional gender norms, I'm a failure. In the eyes of traditional gender norms, you shouldn't have a PhD or be giving a speech. You should be at home cleaning or something. It's possible that the traditional gender norms that you're referring to are antiquated, and you shouldn't be living your life based off of them. I'm fun, I'm charming, I'm not completely hideous. And humble. When I was young, I created a long list of all the things that I wanted in my future husband. She could have just left it at smart, tall, handsome Yankees fan, and she'd still be ruling out almost every single man. Also, what the heck does spousal hire potential mean? Is that like ability to get a job? This list keeps getting smaller and smaller. I don't really need someone that's good at computers and cars and construction. It probably would be hard to find yourself a Denzel Washington meets Bob the Builder. And I came up with most important things to me. I have no problem with this much more realistic list. Here I stand, single like a slice of craft. Taken out of context, that's a hilarious comment. But let me remind you of the context. This is a TED talk. It's 24 things single people are tired of hearing. We now just get a minute of her just reading the questions from this BuzzFeed article. How are you still single? You're so great. I know, right? Don't worry, you'll find someone. Just don't turn into a crazy cat lady. Too late on that one. You should let me set you up. Uh, hell no. She's complaining about being single, but is unwilling to give a possible date a chance. Effect, meet, cause. And my absolute favorite, you should put yourself out there more. I'm out there, all right? I'm trying, you know? I'm not going to the bar. If you're so desperate to get married that you're giving a TED talk about it, then maybe you should be going to bars, or speed dating events, or buy a t-shirt that says, I want to get married on it. I'm keeping my eyes and my mind and my heart open. She's open to finding love in so many different ways, except for all of the ways that she's listed so far that she refuses to look. Don't ask me about my love life. Woman who doesn't want to talk about her love life gets up on stage and talks to millions of people about her love life. I don't get why married people think they only can hang out with married people. Please don't cut me out of your life because I don't have a spouse. Not to be mean, but I think your married friends might be cutting you out of their life for different reasons. Stop the phony sympathy. Try genuine support instead. Couldn't the phony sympathy very well just be genuine support, but you're just not taking it that way? I will never understand when I hear through the grapevine that somebody says, oh, so-and-so is so worried about you. Yeah, I'm so sorry that I'm keeping them up at night with my pathetic single life. Usually when someone is saying that they're worried about you, it's because they understand how hard it is on you. I don't think the implication here was that it's hard on them at all. Whether or not I have a boyfriend doesn't matter. And if it does matter, if, if your life is so dependent on that, 
You need to get a hobby. Okay. Based on the fact that you just gave an 11 minute TED talk about how you're upset that you're still single, I think it might be affecting your friends' lives. There is no one correct path. So some people get married really young. Some people get married young and get divorced. Some people get remarried. Some people get married when they're older. Some people live together forever and never get married. Some people are truly happy being single. And that's all fine. None of those are right or wrong. You do understand that this point goes against everything you've said so far in this TED Talk, right? And that's actually the one that I need to take up to heart the most. Oh, we did get there. But this story does have a happy ending because I looked up Erica and it would appear that she's actually found a husband and now has a kid. So congratulations, Erica. I'm happy for you. But that doesn't change the fact that we did not need your TED Talk.